Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thrive in China Roundtable. We are in our sixth week, I believe, fifth or sixth week of uh, the 2023 Roundtable season. Um, before we start with today's topic, uh, just for me to get a bit of background on who has joined our Roundtable, it's always great insight for me to know a little bit the background of people that are participating in our Roundtables. So if you are a newbie in China, if you're a startup in China, or you're an experienced China hand, we would love to have that feedback. Um, it gets us to know our audience a little bit better. For those of you that are new to our roundtable, allow me to introduce who I am. My name is Christina kohler Colucci. I'm the head of business advisory of Woodburn Accountants and Advisors. I'm a leading expert on inbound investment into China, and I have 18 years of experience in corporate services and compliance. Um, we help <clears throat> foreign invested companies with their market entry, their pre-investment advisory, their implementation, and their growth in the Hong Kong and Chinese market. I'm also a creator of a following of, of a group of administrative processes that have simplified companies and leaders' lives in terms of creating their foundation in the Chinese market. If you're interested in watching our processes, um, our blueprints, you can head on over to our website. All the resources are there. It's www.woodburnglobal.com. Um, before we start today's presentation, just to let you know that we've written a book called The 10 Biggest Mistakes Companies Make in China. If you're interested in receiving a free copy of our ebook, you can get it by just emailing me at christina at woodburnglobal.com. So to start with today's roundtable, the topic for today is, are managed office spaces a smarter choice for your China startup? Now, it might be weird that people think, why is she talking about managed offices, serviced offices, business centers? Well, it's because in China, when you're incorporating an entity, you need to have a designated registered office address. So in order to simplify that concept and the fact that you need to have an address, um, my whole philosophy is better to use something that's manageable, flexible, and easy, particularly in your startup phase, than going ahead and leasing a physical property and having to renovate it, buy furniture, install Wi-Fi and whatnot. Um, but before we get on that, let me introduce you to the concept of managed offices and why, I, what for me are the six benefits around them. Ideas are easy, implementation is hard. One thing we all learn as aspiring businesses is that there's a whole lot more to being a business owner than just coming up with the initial concept. This is true in China as well, where the image of a company and a business owner are truly vital and important. Choosing the right office space or working environment for a startup is on the list of essentials. Not only is it because you need a registered office address in order to incorporate your company, but it's also because you want to attract employees to that location. You want to have a certain image in terms of the business that you are implementing in the market. You want to develop a brand around what you're doing in China. And a one size fits all approach simply doesn't work in the Chinese market. Each new business is unique. So we need to consider the needs of your business. What working style will meet that um, at obviously the best possible price? Because obviously when we are in a startup phase, we're in a budget oriented phase as well. Not long ago, the business office was an asset in itself, something that a business owner would pay for and maintain themselves. However, in recent years, and particularly due to COVID, there's been a real shift in the way that we work, in how office spaces are perceived, and the rise of the managed office has been a slow and steady one, but these days many businesses are reaping the benefits of this type of working environment. So today we're gonna to look at six benefits of a managed office space in China. And the first one is save money on startup costs. We all understand that the costs of starting up a new business in China are significant, and we must evaluate fully each one as part of our initial research. 
office costs may be low on many people's priority lists, but they can actually soon add up um, to a monumental figure. And more importantly than just a monumental figure, they can add up to being something that is critical from a legal and tax perspective. Now, when going down the traditional office hire route, there are many things to consider. The business owner will have to furnish the space themselves, cover the cost of broadband, Wi-Fi, phone lines, utility bills, cleaning services, even hire reception staff or admin staff. In a managed office, all of these things comes under one fee, helping to reduce the operational costs of the startup to the lowest possible point. The second benefit is office space can grow with the business, right? We need to have flexibility and flexibility is key when a business is in its initial phase. Some companies take off overnight while others achieve more of a slow burn effect. Others during COVID will scale up, then scale down and scale up again and then scale down again and scale up again. We need flexibility in moments of crisis, uh, economic dilemmas, uh, basically within the initial startup phase. Now, a challenge that many companies face is not knowing which way their business will be going and unsure whether to commit to a fixed term office contract. Managed offices, business centers are a viable option in just this scenario, since many of them allow customers to flexibly upgrade or downgrade their plan according to the growth or the scaling back of their business. If the startup grows, more quickly than expected, the company can simply upgrade their managed office plan to obtain more space rather than having to rapidly move out and find new premises. Um, having the choice to tailor your space to the needs of your business at any given time is a huge bonus for a startup company. The third benefit is no need for large long-term contracts. Now in China, a one-year lease agreement must be signed any agreement shorter than this will be not denied during the incorporation phase. As soon as you sign the lease agreement, you've got to use it for the registration process. Delaying the company registration process may cause the government bodies like the Ministry of Commerce to reject the lease agreement. If you, for example, if you were to delay the process by six months, there's only six months remaining on your lease agreement, then the government may ask you to re-sign the agreement accordingly so that there's one year's worth of validity of the agreement. Now, the benefits of a, of a business center space is the flexibility, which lies at the very heart of the whole concept. A big drawback for um, startups, leaders in China who are just starting out is often the fact that they must commit to long drawn out office contracts, locking them into a deal, regardless of what the future may hold for their business. It's ultimately a leap of faith that few are really willing to take. Now, on the other side of the coin, most managed offices, office providers don't require customers to sign up to lengthy contracts, um, meaning more than one year. Contrary to what we find with standard office leasing, these setups mean that businesses can rent spaces for a year, a few weeks, or even a single day. Just to highlight though, if you're incorporating an entity, you will have to sign at least a 12 month, one year lease agreement. Now this high level of control over the service really, really always helps customers to have a piece peace of mind, right? Now, the other fourth benefit is the opportunity to join co-working communities. And I really cannot emphasize this more, especially if you don't know people or you're, you have a staff who's completely alone. This is their way of socializing and networking, okay? So for smaller companies, having a closed office space may not be the most logical solution to their needs. Many business centers have a co-working option available, and it's one that many businesses are finding valuable today so that their staff can socialize, network, be around people versus just being at home, which after three years in COVID and the extensive lockdowns is, is causing mental health issues. The first industry, which I'm sure everybody is aware of, that truly embraced this modern style of working um, is the creative, creative sector. And the co-working space actually brings independent creatives together, but lets them work alone. In that sense, a kind of setup means that people who work in the same field can be in the same office space without necessarily being employed by the same companies. 
and it facilitates communities of people working in the same industry sectors, along with a wealth of networking opportunities, which will bring us to the next point. Now, I just want to highlight when I started off in China, I was also in a business center. As a new expat in China, it was a perfect way for me to also network with individuals that were totally not in my industry or sector, but who were also running into the same obstacles as me in terms of HR issues, in terms of financial issues, in terms of banking issues, in terms of just generally other types of administrative issues or even customer issues in some instances. And it was a great way during a coffee break or a lunch break to chat vocalize our issues and see if anybody had had that problem before. Now we can do that on WeChat, but I can't emphasize more that face-to-face -face interaction, which can truly help. Now this was me as an expat, but I just want to highlight that this is something also of value to a lot of Chinese people who want to brainstorm and network with individuals that either are in the same business or in completely different industries, but have the same obstacles. Benefit five is collaborate with like-minded individuals, which is exactly what I'm referring to. I met a lot of like-minded individuals who were going through the same startup phase as me in terms of incorporating an entity and going through that initial growth stage. And we have to face it, no business is an island. For any fledgling company to flourish, it's crucial that the overseas headquarter makes meaningful external connections. <clears throat> and the office environment which the company inhabits plays a leading role in this process. The idea is that the opportunity to regularly bump into like-minded professionals could enhance your business network in a big way. Many business centers include added extras such as monthly professional meetups, networking sessions, even dedicated social media platforms which are exclusive to the space where you can then share ideas. The last benefit is really the low cost option of virtual offices. Now shoestring setups will of course benefit from low cost alternatives to the traditional office space. As it happens, many business centers have just the solution. The virtual office allows a company to use some of the core facilities of a managed space without physically working in the building. And this is now becoming more and more popular. Companies who opt for this style of working can use the space's address as their registered business address, have access to call answering facilities, um, uh, and can also have their mail handed by the reception staff. A small, small, small comment to mention from a legal perspective is that virtual office addresses in China are consider considered illegal as designated registered office addresses and should be avoided as much as possible. Keep in mind, this is not a long-term solution. When you go through the incorporation phase and you want to go and open your bank account, the bank will request to do a site visit of your office. So you've got to make sure you're also working with a business center that can handle these types of meetings on your behalf. Okay. If you decide to make this your long-term registered office address option, problems may occur later when site visits are conducted by certain government bodies like tax bureaus, um, state, uh, uh, tax bureaus, customs bureaus, who are just doing general spot checks. Okay. Now, benefits in short of the managed office is fast Wi-Fi connection and phone lines, which you might not get at your apartment, fully furnished office spaces, staff receptions, options to scale up, regular events and meetups. Ultimately, the type of office setup you choose should directly align to your business requirements. Now, if you suddenly say, well, Christina, actually I need to have a tiny warehouse space to store inventory, well, a business center or a managed office space might not have that available for you. So you need to really look at what your needs are in terms of space and how that can help you. Managed offices offer a flexible, affordable, easy to understand service and should be really considered for that startup phase, that initial phase as you are getting into China. Now, before we end today's session, I just wanna highlight it is every real estate agent's mantra, location, location, location. And this is their mantra globally. You've certainly heard the phrase enough and may wonder what inspires agents to say the word three times. Choosing a location for a new business, especially in such a large country as China is one of the most important decisions leaders, companies, entrepreneurs make during the planning phase of launching their China venture. 
The location of a business can affect many aspects of how it operates, such as total sales, talent acquisition, talent retainment, how costly it is to run, and the big two things, which are legal consequences and tax consequences of your office address. Don't rush the decision to choose your Chinese city, to choose the district in that city, and to choose the type of office in that district. The best recommendation an advisor can give you is to meet with real estate agents locally to discuss your lease objectives, your company's goals, together with your financial budget, to really filter and determine what is the right location for your business. Also, speak with lawyers or corporate service providers about what are the tax and legal consequences to having a managed office space or any other office space. You have to understand what these consequences lead to. By not choosing the right location, city, district, or office space can lead to detrimental legal and tax consequences that will cost you more later on to fix than getting it right, right from the beginning. I hope this session, this round table has helped. If you've got any questions, please let us know. We're gonna have a bit of a Q&A at the end. We would love to hear what your biggest takeaway from today was. Please do add that in. It was a very short and sweet presentation. If you would like to have more advice for doing business in China or Hong Kong, if you do have any pain points, you can schedule a free 15 minute discovery call with us to see if we can be of help and assistance. And don't forget to subscribe to our Thrive in China Roundtable. Spread the word for people to attend. Once you've registered once, you can show up for all of them. We do it every Wednesday at 1 p.m. The upcoming roundtables are 1st of March. Look the other way. Is ignoring the competition in China really the key to success? 8th of March, how effective is it to outsource professional services? Disrupting the Chinese market, is it essential for business success? We're going to look at the joint venture, joint venture infection and then getting noticed, how to build a strong brand awareness for your new China company. Stay tuned for what's upcoming from Woodburn, um, and I hope to see you very soon. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>